Hi everyone, I've um, been meaning to do this for a little while and that is to take a step away from movies and books and to do a big roundup on TV. So this will be no spoilers, no spoilers at all. Either I'm going to just tell you about stuff which I think is worth watching and maybe a quick discussion just on what the general idea is, something that you would get from the trailers or maybe a bit of an insight as to whether um, it succeeded or not. And so we're just going to go through about 10 different shows, just give you a minute or two on each, and that's it. Um, so that you can work out, because I know I have a big problem with there's just too much stuff and what to watch and what not to watch. And sometimes that can differ just based on your style of TV and what you enjoy. So the big one, uh, which just came out uh, a couple of days ago, is Stranger Things 2. Came out uh, just before Halloween in America and around the world on Netflix. And um, like everyone, I absolutely loved Stranger Things 1. Thought it was amazing and really great mix. And we're not going to go into how good it was. So Stranger Things 2, I've watched four episodes and I will say only this, that it's a much slower build and although I'm really enjoying it because we're playing in that same world and I love all the characters, um, I'm not sure it's recapturing the magic of season one. And maybe that was impossible. So anyway, that's just my two cents on that one. The other big show that I absolutely loved and I've just recently finished watching is Mind Hunters. Now, Mind Hunters is on Netflix as well. It's a David Fincher produced show. Him and Charlize Theron are the producers, and he directed a couple of the episodes. And you actually can tell when David Fincher is directing them because um, there's just a step up in quality. But Mind Hunters, if it rings a bell, uh, for anyone, I know I read the book um, when I went through my, like a lot of people did back uh, when Silence of the Lambs came out, I had my serial killer kind of binge and I was reading everything and there was a famous book by John Douglas um, who, if you watch Silence of the Lambs, Jack Crawford is basically based on John Douglas and uh, he wrote a book called Mind Hunters, and I think this is the inspiration for it. And it's like Science of the Lambs, you know how there's the VCAP unit where they try to get into the psychology of serial killers. This TV series is how did that uh, historically occur? But obviously, even though they've paid um, for the Douglas book, there's some sort of fictionalization because Douglas isn't in it. His stand-in is, and I'll look at the name, Tolden Ford, played by Jonathan Groff. Weird casting, because although I like Jonathan Groff, he really doesn't play these kind of roles. Uh, and it kind of works, interestingly enough. And then his offsider is Tench, played by Holt McCallie, who I'd seen around but really didn't know. And if you know anything about the real VCAP, a unit that was Douglas and a guy named Wrestler, and I think these two um, are basically playing those two guys. And uh, the other big player is Antorv, who, if you know, uh, El loved the show Fringe. She's really, really good in it. In fact, the whole cast is excellent. And the big shout out is Cameron Britton, who plays uh, Ed Kemper, who's one of the most famous serial killers. Uh, in the world and always was this kind of mythical character. He's like six foot nine, but IQ off the scale, turned himself in, kind of this really weird guy. And um, very early on, he's the first guy that they talk to. So I can't recommend it highly. And if you're a Science of the Lambs fan, you can see that Fincher has just gone, we're going to shoot this. We're going to channel Jonathan Demi um, in the way that we shoot these episodes and even the font they use, the lighting, um, the way they shoot the cities, um, straight out of the Science of the Lambs playbook. So that's Mindhunters. Um, 
The other one I want to talk about really quickly is Ray Donovan. Uh, we're up to season five and it has been a really disappointing season. I'm a big Ray Donovan fan, but this has just not been able to find its uh, meter and they seem to be struggling with what to do with the character. And um, I haven't finished season five, I've got one episode to go, but season six, they've already announced they're gonna do a big change up. And I think that's required for the show to find what it wants to talk about. It's really shifted away um, from the show that it began as. Um, okay, we're gonna take a break and then I'm gonna come back with more TV. Okay, so the big news in the last couple of days, if you haven't heard, um, but you'd have to be living under a rock, is the uh, sexual assault allegations against Kevin Spacey. And um, as a reaction to that, Kevin Spacey then announced that a uh, pretty well-known secret, I would think that he's gay, and kind of was very clumsily done and, uh, I won't go into it, it's all kind of a bit, and I read just before I came out here, another allegation has been made against him. Netflix has responded straight away and they've gone, season six of House of Cards will be the last one, and uh, they've just halted production on season six. So there's even a question mark now whether that goes ahead. Um, and already the rumours are, do they do a spin-off show uh, and the main character being spoken of is Doug Stamper, who is by far the best and most interesting and most complex character because everyone else is now like out of a pantomime. It's, they're ridiculously overblown characters. Doug Stamper is the only one who's got a semblance of reality. So that'll be really interesting. I just watched season five was hard to watch because um, with the Trump presidency, the kind of things they were doing on the show, which otherwise would have seemed really amazing, just seemed like it couldn't live up to the reality of what had happened in the 2016 election. So it suffered from that, which is a shame because it was actually a um, well-made show, well-acted and did some interesting things. but. I'm a bit over it, I must admit, and I wouldn't mind if they just buried the whole thing and we can remember the first two seasons, which were just amazing. Walking Dead. Now, Walking Dead, uh, last season was a slog. I have been hate watching it for a while now. If you, it's like a soap opera. You've, once you've watched one or two seasons, you kind of have to watch because you want to know what happens to the core survivors. But really, I fast forward most of it because the stuff I'm interested in is the character interaction. And 80% of each episode is them walking through, you know, there's a zombie trap or a Negan trap and they get around it. Or someone that you hardly know, just got introduced three episodes ago, then gets killed. And it's really boring. And it took a hammering last year critically and the numbers dropped off and the numbers are just falling. It has um, really lost a lot of its um, viewership and it is hard to watch. The first two episodes, you really, it's all about tactical kind of combat and not good at all. So uh, really, it's one of the things, if you're watching at this stage, you're in, but um, yeah, uh, you would, not want to start watching now and really it's on the cut like house of cards you you could give up at any moment i watched a show uh, i've been listening to a podcast for a long time called law by aaron menke and um it's all about as you would imagine by the name urban myths folk tales bigfoot gypsy kind of curses and all these kinds of things the kind of stuff i absolutely love um and uh, what they've done is they've taken that and they've put it on uh, Amazon Prime. And it's a, a weird show because what they do is they reenact some of it and some of it they use animation um, and some of it they just use um, voiceovers. 
And what I found was whenever they weren't reenacting it and they were basically just telling you about a story or they were using this incredibly beautiful animation to tell it, um, I loved it. And in fact, if the episodes, instead of being whatever they are, half an hour, 35 minutes, were only maybe 20 minutes and just animated, I would be recommending this highly. But the reenactment, some of the acting is really bad. The other thing is only six episodes, but the first two episodes are by far the weakest. So I could easily see someone going, oh, I'll give it a shot and try the first episode and no good. Um, whereas it gets stronger as it goes. So maybe they kind of worked out how to tell these stories. I'm not sure, but uh, if you're into this stuff, it's probably worth watching, but you're probably better off with the podcast um, than diving in if it's not your cup of tea. The big show um, that I've really enjoyed, apart from Mindhunters, was The Juice. Now, there's no higher pedigree. TV royalty, David Simon, the maker of what I consider the greatest TV show ever, or at least dramatic, The Wire, has returned after disappointing um, Treme, disappointing in the sense that people still liked it, but it couldn't live up to the expectations of The Wire. And he's come back with a show called The Juice, and it's set in the 1970-71 in Times Square, New York, um, and it's about how that area shifts. And um, basically, it's a lot of different stories um, led by James Franco, who plays two roles, twins, and who's running a bar and how he uh, basically, through help from the mob, starts to expand into that bar scene around that time and all the people who he interacts with. Now, as soon as you say James Franco playing Twint, you go, I'm out. He is amazingly good. Now, I thought he would kill this show and I can't believe how good he is. And really charismatic and looks like a real guy. Whereas normally in his movies, he always plays just such an, I mean, apart from the um, Planet of the Ape role, Always oh, played such an idiot, and I couldn't see how this would work. He is great. The other person who's just in the year of Elizabeth Moss, wow, I didn't think anyone would get close. Maggie Gyllenhaal plays a prostitute who works by self, no pimp, and she does some acting in this. She walks in, the guy might say a line, and she will, with her eyes, dominate the scene, hardly any dialogue, and you know exactly what has just occurred. Um, and there's one scene where she gives an explanation to a guy who's a bit unhappy with what has happened with um, their transaction, and she explains in about 10 lines uh, the whole ethos of capitalism. And that's what this show is about. It's about capitalism. There's pimps, prostitutes, how sex gets commodified, but really it's about middlemen, who gets a cut, who's labor. Uh, yeah, it's, you could read Das Kapital, then read Adam Smith, and then watch The Juice, and you would know a lot about where capitalism is uh, in modern America. So that was really, really good show, and it just ended, so you probably can get it on all the catch-ups. And... Have I got anything else? Look, I'm just going to give a quick shout out uh, to Rick and Morty. Finally, season three came out and it's just great. It's the best animated show. I know a lot of people talk about BoJack Horseman. Rick and Morty is the funniest show uh, on TV and just great. So that's it. This is just a quick hit. I'll get back to you with more movies, books and TV. You please subscribe. You touch the bell. That time means you get an email uh, whenever I put up new content. I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. I'll see you next time. Bye.